Okay, thank you very much for coming back. So we have our second talk in the humanitarian stream. Uh, and it's a real pleasure to welcome Dr. Uh, Wayson Lee from uh, Secretary General from the National Science and Technology Center for Disaster Risk Re Disaster Reduction in Taiwan. So there was a, probably a competition between our Mexican visitor and our visitor from Taiwan, and probably 15 hours on a plane to come here uh, visit. So uh, it's going to be a very, very interesting talk, uh, <clears throat> I'm sure. And uh, Dr. Dr. Lee will provide a critical overview of the differences uh, preparing for response to uh, two recent uh, disasters uh, in, in Taiwan, to quake and, and a typhoon, and showing a lot of really interesting uh, initiatives that they have. So without any further ado, I'll, I'll leave the floor for Dr. Lee. Big chair and uh, or the distinguished guests and students. Today, I'm so honored to have a chance to speak here, especially talk about some dynamics and challenge of crisis management during disaster, especially when we try to apply some information intelligence to control no matter casualty or losses. That is very important job to my office. I'm from Taiwan, and my office name is National Science and Technology Center for Disaster Reduction. Believe me, it's very hard to remember, even in Chinese. The first time I came to my office, I spent maybe one day to remember the full title of my office because it's pretty long. For easy to remember, just remember NCDI easily because, because my office full name is too long. Why the disaster risk management is so important? This is uh, one report published by Macro Croft, very famous insurance company based in London. It talked about the economic exposure to nature hazard. Taiwan is the number three around the world, very high. Especially, all you know, along the west coast of Taiwan, we have so many chips producing industrial like TSMC. I think some of you are iPhone users. The central processor, processing unit is made in Taiwan. So we cannot avoid kind of truth because we are fully exposed to nature hazard. But this is what, in fact, we have before. The lower part is about the one earthquake hit us in 1999. The name of earthquake, Chichi earthquake. One earthquake killed us almost 25,000 people, but 2.5 thousand people, and caused huge direct economic losses. So because this earthquake, you see, right now, if you visit Taiwan, we presume this the stadium as the museum to remember power earthquake uplift about uh, 1.3 meters just in seconds. And likewise, this uh, class study we also preserve as the museum to remember power of earthquake. But however, we witnessed so much destruction in Taiwan ever. And another one is about Typhoon Morocco hit in 2009, killed about 700 people. And of course, caused a lot of direct economic losses. The first one is momentum in Taiwan will push the law for disaster management. So hit in 1999 and we passed low year 2000. And after the Typhoon Morocco in 2009, we want to upgrade our disaster management system. As I changed before the talk, disaster risk management is kind of sometimes a painful learning process because some people die, some people lost their loved ones, some people lost their property then we realize something we can do better for the next time. So during my career, I learned a lot. But from another point of view, think about resilience. There's also same report published by Microcroft in the, I think in the 2013. From this report, Taiwan and Japan both list as the low risk. So Taiwan is here, so small compared to Japan and Korea. For the previous one, extreme extreme level for this one low risk i tried to conclude some factor why we can list at low risk first of all we apply science and technology look the office name national science and technology for disaster reduction at the beginning when our government in lord want to set up my office we want to emphasize power of technology to reduce impact 
But very interesting. Look at my office title. Even look at my mail. I like dot gov in my office email. But I am not government servant. I just government hire disaster manager. Right now, I change my title. Government hire scientific disaster manager. We help try to provide some suggestion for government to solve problem. As mentioned by Edward, the most challenging thing is about rotation. Every few weeks, we might have the change in government structure, even have the regular personal uh, rotation. But in Taiwan, NCDR play a kind of constant role. We keep institution memory. We keep about what happened before. In case of emergency, we can propose some suggestion, like what we've done before. That's a very important no matter for COVID, no matter for nature disaster. We need some people remember what happened before. And based on experience, we can propose some suggestion. So this is real about science and technology. Another one is transparent risk. Before the year 2000 in Taiwan, there is no hazard map at all. But after the uh, Chichi earthquake, we learned we must have some face to do some risk communication with general public. So we start producing some risk map. The first risk map we showed to the general public is about flood map. But at that time, we didn't receive a lot of applause, but a lot of complaint, especially from the construction company. They complained because the, the report, because the map, devaluate their properties. They complained. But almost 20 years later, even right now, when some companies sell house, they will say, According to the hazard map produced by NCDR, this location is safe. Now, the same product, after 20 years, people can use the concept in different directions. For the first one, very negative things. Our report just bring a lot of troubles. But for the second one, they think it's a way they understand risk and do something. They can avoid risk. So very important how to keep the, the constant moment. Another one, of course, the legal framework and last one active participation by private sector. So my office not just work with government, not just work with research community, very important part. We have to engage some activity led by NGOs. Maybe later you can see one activity we work with NGO for a young leadership. So about my office, everyone interesting in my office, uh, stand office around the world, usually under the Ministry of Civil Defense or Ministry of the Interior. But my office direct under National Science and Technology Council. Why? Because we say we want to apply science and technology for disaster reduction. Must have the good supervising authority help us and give us a lot of input, no matter about budget. And a most important thing, some research outcome from the university. So we direct under the NSTC. So we can have budget. We can have scientific knowledge. Uh, but at my office, we have so many diverse divisions. From the meteorology, talking about typhoon, talking about torrential rain, slow rain and hydrology, talking about the landslide, mudslide, and also about drought and flood. And for the policy in the uh, economical division, we talk about policy and social impact. And for earthquake amendment, it's easy to understand because we frequently have earthquake in Taiwan. And for the information division, very important thing. I emphasize about information intelligence. All this division, they produce some products. So we can use information system, ICT technology to disseminate information to target user. I will talk about what this target user my office has. And last one is new division at my office about climate change division because in Taiwan, we also face very uh, challenging issue related to climate change. like. Recent year, we had last typhoon. Then we will have problem about drought because without typhoon, we don't have sufficient uh, 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 fresh water. And uh, myself, I'm working in the international collaboration division. But before I joined NCDR, I was a school professor. My background is civil engineering in charge of earthquake design. So before I joined my office, I have the limited knowledge about disaster risk management. Only thing I know about how to design a strong bridge of building in case of earthquakes. And uh, you see my office, we have diverse background. But most important thing, we, our major job is provide some services 
Of course, we published some journal paper, but most important job for my office first about science and technology transfer. NCDR stand as a bridge among several key stakeholders, like the government, like the research community, NGOs. We collect demand, we find our solution, provide different stakeholders. This is why NCDR have kept dialogue with a lot of key stakeholders. So this is sometimes I think I'm lucky because of my job, I can talk to researcher, I can talk to NGO, I can talk to government official. So I know what they want, but sometimes they lack kind of a channel to discuss together. One thing as the Edward mentioned, they speak different language. So we need someone to under the language and the transfer our idea and reach the same goal we have in mind. Actually, I think every key theater want to have a safe society, but they use different language, especially when describe some of the impact. And everyone think their mission is first priority. So how to prioritize the different needs also very important at my office. And we have several products even for the emergency operation. Later, I will tell you my office building is right in our National Emergency Operating Center. In case of earthquake, typhoon will become 724 operational mode. Of course, during the peaceful days, it's just nine to five. But our job is not about searching and rescue. Look at my size. I cannot <laughs> move into the debris, find someone survive. But I'm good at telling how many officials in EOC, where are the disaster hotspots? What kind of problem we might have? So our role kind of branding the EOC, try to give them sufficient information, intelligence, they can work. Remember one thing, nowadays I enhance um, information intelligence. Why I emphasize intelligence? Information that means tell you something is happening, but you cannot make decision just based on that information. But intelligence give you more specific idea how and why you to do. So this is something we are going to do for kind of statements. And this is my office building. You see, my office building is nine and 12th floor. And uh, the third and fourth floor is our central emergency operating center. In case of emergency, my, my colleague and my boss will join operation here. And we also have office disaster management. It's kind of cabinet level office in charge of disaster management. So we have teamwork with them. Even we have the national fire agency, which agency in charge about the, a lot of kind of 911 calls. So we can collect what happened outside. And even we have our phone service call. So we also can ask about some uh, uh, assistance if, if we need kind of uh, uh, early, early surveillance, surveillance they can provide. So this is one room to prove how science can work even with top decision maker. This gentleman is my boss, sorry, <laughs> State. So this is a real operation situation. This is the product of my office about information system. We try to explain the situation to a minister. Then even the big meeting room have close agency, close ministry meeting. So we even have a report at this location we can argue with each other because it's away from the media. Media is here. So we want to have the secret place that we can argue to find the best solution. So remember one thing, never have easy solution when we have disaster or emergency because there is too many considerations to take care. So what is priority should be very clear. And this is structure of a Taiwan, especially central government for disaster risk management. So you see, NCDR has a role here. We provide the role, ordinary day, we provide a role as kind of the consulting agency, provide suggestion of matter for disaster risk reduction or climate change adaptation, or even what we need for future emergency operation. But in case of emergency, NCDR will join emergency operating center immediately. So we have the kind of mission. So whenever we recruit a young man or young lady to my office, the first question we will ask them, in case about uh, working 24 hours, can you accept kind of workload? If they know, sorry, fail to join my office because 
our application is in case of emergency, we will be part of a national task force to face challenges. And this is also short review about my work since 2004. So luckily or not lucky or unfortunately, I joined at very early phase of in Taiwan. I joined at my office in year 2004. At that time, when I joined EOC, I felt we are not so welcome. Why? Because at that time we emphasize, oh, according to our model, according our equation, this is about the result, about the aerobot, how much the, the, the aerobot. And the emerging responder, okay, thank you. They cannot understand our language. But it's the time we just try to tell them how we can help you. So at this phase, the leader in EOC, especially emerging response, is just emerging responder. At, at that time, we use a lot of old fashioned tools like fax, like radio. And the only thing we do, of course, evacuation or search and rescue, only during and after, especially for typhoon, we never think about how we can do in advance to reduce the casualty. I will explain why we think that advanced operation is so important. So at this field, I think we have a low trust, low mutual trust. We don't like each other. And the very important thing, we try and error by action. So we had to pay some price. We never have time to have good discussion. Every one mission fail, of course, we might point at each other. So it try and error by action. And second one, we're learning by mistakes. So I say it's a painful process and limited information exchange. Because at that time, my office was new to the EOC. Everyone don't want to share information with my office. They say, you might misuse my office, misinterpret our information. Why I share information with you? It could be dangerous. So it's the bureaucratic operation. And later, because more, more and more events end, we increase the understanding the, from the 1999 to year 2000, I will describe is science based. So right now, the emergent responder understand we can do something. And a very important, we introduce early warning and early evacuation. So they need science to identify where are the hotspots we need to evacuation. So gradually we understand what's the demand between each other. We begin to talk and. The, they also agreed data is so important. So they start sharing data with my office. And the most important thing, we try to do something before the type of medical landfall, like evacuation, deploy troops, deploy equipment, just in case in some hotspot, we can have some operation. So very important, we win mutual trust because good collaboration. And second thing, we try to error. This time we buy science and technology. We can know something good, something bad. And another one, we embrace open attitude. Welcome kind of open data policy. We set up the like inventory of data so we know the quality of data. So it's a chance we can upgrade the quality of data. And last one, learning by sharing is very important. So we have the regularly a dialogue to talk about what we can do better. In front of 2004 and now, I think it's about information based period of time. So not just about the scientists, but also general public join, because we can have the power if we can make use of the, the social media. By crowdsourcing, we can collect information, help to understand what happened outside. I will give a few examples. In September, how I use the crowdsourcing. And right now, in, oh, very important thing is uh, big data and impact assess, impact based preparedness. So we can do a lot of deployment in advance. We can understand what is could happen if have an earthquake. And it emphasized co-design, co-work, co-implement, consider about the disaster risk reduction and climate change adaptation. So it's the process in my career. I witnessed in the last 18 years, how we reshaped the disaster risk management in time. Of course, I'm an, only a small part of it. Behind that is kind of the determination by government. I said in 2009, Typho Morocco is the big momentum to push the big data application. Our 
vice premier instructed all government agencies should share information with my office free and even real time. So this is why we can use a lot of big data to solve a problem. So this is the result from Typo Morocco. Right now, you see over 40 government agencies share more, maybe 400 big data sets, real time and free. That's a very rare case around the world because even inter-government agency data sharing is sometimes very difficult. But with the agency, they think, hmm, they can misuse our data. Ah, no. But because the type of Morocco, our government realized it's the big issue. So we have big joints standing behind us. He made the schedule to check they make it or not. So this is why we have the big data. But, but to be the good partner with our partners, we must highlight their contribution. So we also want to create kind of win-win situation. So more and more government agencies, they are willing to share data with my office. Because when we present something to high ranking official, we will recognize their contribution. We will help them to have more budget to upgrade their system to improve their quality. So do remember NCD are just the part of disaster management since in Taiwan. But our office emphasized when we have so much data, we must bring some action and application. We never satisfy by publishing papers. We think action and application is more important. Then I try to explain. This is something we use right now about information. I call it end to one, then one too many. What is end to one? Because we have unified body, like my office work with so many agencies, we can collect a lot of different data. Of course, the traditional one is including monitoring numerical physical or statistical data, and even some social data, like social status. But right now, we also use some non-structured data, especially maybe video, maybe picture, maybe short text. And we also understand must fulfill is end-to-end -end connection. Maybe from the end is the rain gauge data tell you how much rain we already reported. But after our digest, when we send information to season and decision maker, we consider they need different information intelligence. For the city that maybe they just know flood or not, and the when and where to evacuate. But for a decision maker, they want to know how much time he or she has to do some pre disaster deployment. So though the same data is about the range, but we should consider based their need to deliver different information. And another one we must also emphasize over the top diverse channel to disseminate information intelligence to the end user. I will share some example. My office tried to make use the over the top. Over the top, of course, is for a kind of Netflix or Disney Plus. They use internet provider, make your home at the theater. We also use the technology. We use the different ICT channel to disseminate alert to the general public, to the decision maker, because we don't have to build such information system if we can make use of ICT. So this is later I will emphasize innovation and creativity is so important to improve quality of disaster risk management. So for the young generation, never limit your imagination. Maybe something is too new to now, but maybe five years later is the good idea. And first step, start from year 2000, we received instruction from government decide to have open data from different managers, even from private sector, to share with different people, maybe government agency, maybe app developer, even private company. And a very important thing, we use it HAP, Common Alerting Protocol. So currently we have the 40 uh, agencies, including private sector, we have 59 different categories. Sorry, the word a little bit small from the natural disaster, even operation of subway, railway, even kind of the, the pandemic system, we can also share the alert to the general public through a different channel to cover our society, this is step one. Step two, in 2013, we collaborated with Google. At that time, Google have the project, not google.com, it's google.org, that's a different. Google.com based on profit, google.org, that of 
emphasize some creativity, some humanitarian assistance. So we joined the Google Crisis Map. So we share information on Google Crisis Map. Why we share information with Google? We never pay anything to Google. Likewise, we never charge anything from Google. The reason is very simple. In case of emergency, we don't think any government agency have huge big bandwidth to accommodate many, many users. However, to Google, bandwidth never be the issue. So we share information to Google and Google display on Google's crisis map. And just like Google map, so we don't need to train people to use the Google crisis map. So we say the budget of bandwidth also save the time to train our citizens. So it's the good collaboration. So the first time we issued the service and we have the typo immediately. And for the first time we had 1.3 million users access Google system to acquire information. So in the coming year, you see every year, I think over 15 million people ever receive information from Google system. So it saves a lot of money and bandwidth. And nowadays in the future, right now, Google already, always, already combined the cap into the Google map. They use, uh, for in this example, it shows the flood alert in Taipei city. So step by step, we try to merge our product with the people's daily life. So in the future, I know one kind of the share a motorbike, electric motorbike on their panel, they also show about if they're closing to kind of landslide of flood, they'll show some warning on the panel. So this is how we try to enhance the information public. Another one, my office also in charge, cell broadcast system. Like any earthquake or any, even kind of missile attack on the cell phone, we can send to alert on the cell phone. Why we introduce system? Because kind of the situation happened in Japan after the Tokyo earthquake. People in Tokyo received kind of alert about one minute ahead before the earthquake wave arrived. So our government want to implement the system. So my office took the job. Actually, I'm the first uh, project overseer of the CBS. So it's very difficult because during the time, the mobile phone company was complaining because they have applied kind of service free to our government and end user, and they cannot make any sense. And they have received the regular check. So they are so hesitant to put the service online. One day after, within a meeting, I said, we had promised to Premier, we want to push the service online, maybe just yesterday. So they agreed. So we launched the service. And the very next day, we did have an earthquake, but the system performance, not very good. So every new system introduced our society, we need to try and error. So now everyone in Taiwan, they enjoy the services. At the beginning, they complain. So we need to adjust people's behavior by, improve, by improving our performance. It's very important interacting, know the response from the general public and know what we should improve. So it's the evolutional process. In step four, enhance more information coverage. Line, I know line is not very popular in UK. But in the Taiwan, in Japan, in Korea, even in Thai, Lai is so popular. So use one of the popular social uh, instant messages to disseminate alert to the general public. Because almost 90, 96% of cell phones in Taiwan, they have this app. So we push official channel on the line. So we have to see at least 1.3 million users. Ever since we have like earthquake, like other thing, we push the message on the cell phone, just use the picture, tell them about earthquake. So when we design information for the end user, especially for the general public, we use more pictures, not use kind of the pure text. But our first version, just pure text, we don't think is the good for the general public. So for the second version, we change to the picture. And by the way, it's location-based information. So people can subscribe. For example, I live in Taipei, I just subscribe alert in Taipei, and you can select different kind of information you want to receive. So this is the step, how we enhance information intelligence coverage in Taiwan. And about disaster risk management, there are several things. I think the first is kind of uh, 
citation by uh, UNDR first apply this uh, disastrous joint policy strategy to prevent new risk, to reduce existing risk, to manage residual risk. Residual risk is kind of the black swan event over our coping capacity. So we have to manage the consequence. And of course, strengthen resilience. But to me, I think action is more important because only policy, only strategy, just books, volume of books, but about action is most important. So I will show some action I have. I said NCTI will join emerging operation in case of emergency. Our role here is the leader of the situation assessment group. We try to identify disaster hotspots. And do remember NCTI, we are not government servant, but we have to lead the group. We have worked with so many government agencies, talk about different things. I said, we have this agreement. We even have argument here, but it is the good process. Because of the argument, we can have the good solution. So we think the government agency, NCDI, though NCDI is a leader, but we have Office of Disaster Management at Camden level who will deliver our message to the general public, even to the high ranking committee official to the local government. So we have very key work, but, but believe me, it takes time to have harmonic operation here. At the beginning, we might have the finger pointed, we might have disagreement, but finally, NCDR show because we have the power of science and technology. Why? Compared to other agencies, people can have rotation, maybe in two or three years, but most of my colleagues, they can work at my office at five or 10 years. So we had accumulated knowledge. So compared to other government agency, we can show why we emphasize there are some priority based on the past experience. So very important thing for disaster risk management system, we need one agency can keep all institution memory. Otherwise, in case of operation, no one can find a good point. And for example, for the flood, usually we want to answer the question like wind, strong wind or torrential rain, usually like four major impact wind damage, storm surge, flood, and landslide. We try to identify when, where, scale, and scope of impact. It's clear in image, the clear idea that the emergency responder can follow. So we can have the, for example, military can dispatch some army to possibly affect area. In, or they can help early evacuation. Most importantly, even the water resource agency can deploy equipment just in case they have flood. So it's the teamwork. And I show you one report actually in the uh, November 3rd is about the, the typhoon. It hit Taiwan, it's number four report. It's a real report. We make report to committee officer in OC. I just translate from Chinese to English. So first of all, we, I would try to emphasize the movement of typhoon. And the very important things to emphasize data, big data, you see here, the data about the real-time rain gauge data. Every 10 minutes, we receive update, maybe from the Central Weather Bureau, maybe from the Water Resource Agency. And the, the image actually combined the open source from the international government agency, and of course, some input from Central Weather Bureau. And most important thing, on this picture, we try to highlight where are the hotspots of, of the rainfall. So it's very clear what idea on our report direct, simple, and neat. We skip a lot of the scientific language. This picture even good for our commanding officer who had a background about law school, about the economics, about the other field, because it's very clear. First, we report the movement of typhoon and torrential rain. The second one will give very clear idea about time and the space. So for this one, because Taiwan was so close to Taiwan, so we emphasize about the phase of impact and uh, when the typhoon departure from Taiwan. So we will tell them during the impact phase, how much rain they will have in plant area, in mountainous area, we give it the estimated of amount. Likewise, for the living phase about the 
the estimation of precip about precipitation. So if the clear picture, as I mentioned, where where impact and scope of impact. So they can follow the idea to do some de some de deployment. But do remember, only one NCDI is not good enough. We need the partners. We help central government. So uh, our government, the National Science and Techno uh, Technology Council, support one project. So NCDI pair with the local government and local government find a local university. They work together. They use the same model. We help the central government. They help local government. So we'll provide funding. We'll provide information. We'll provide some technology. They help local government. And most important, we can have information exchange to shorten the information gap. So very important thing, what NCDI cannot do everything, but NCDI can be the, the one to link all key stakeholders to enable an environment is very important thing. And likewise, also emphasize about strength, strong winds before and after. And at that time, why we show the capacity of a reservoir? Because we have problem with drought. This year, we had very late typhoon until September, sorry. So we have tell them about effective capacity in individual reservoirs. So use very understandable chart to tell them capacity of the reservoir. And another one for the um, torrential, uh, for the torrential rain easily cause flood. So we also show the hotspot of flood about the different districts about when, so they can do some deployment. Likewise, about impact to the mountains because we had a lot of mountainous highway with a lot of the uh, community or indigenous tribe live in the mountainous area. So we should highlight the location of the indigenous tribe and also the highway. And uh, this is about how we emphasize the recent impact and uh, the possible impact, very important thing, highlight the values, travel values. And of course, another past area to have uh, uh, an slide. And this is another similar one. I will use this one to tell why kind of the collaboration is so important. This is one example we have in two, uh, 2015. This community suffered impact from the debris floor because they received training, because they received information. They make decision to leave their community sitting hour ahead of the debris floor heats. So all 32 residents safe because they took early evacuation. This time is by some early warning. This time is by some early evacuation. Just emphasize today by UNDR, early warning is so important. So this is one example. Another one is about earthquake, about sudden onset disaster. disaster. This is also a real event in the early morning of September 19th, because this is the one earthquake hit Taiwan the Matthew 6.8, uh, one people die, one building collapse, and the several bridge damage. But luckily, we can control the degree of damage. So this is an uh, automatic system. My office will generate kind of report. Compared to typhoon, slow onset disaster, we have time to prepare our presentation, right? In case of earthquake, we have automatic system can be produced kind of report. Of course, we should add something manually, but the principally, most of the report made by computer directly. So even 30 minutes when I report to the EOC, we already had a report. Like if the minister come, we can tell them what happened. So this is, we also help tell them about uh, how many aftershocks since the, uh, September 18, and about the trend of aftershocks. You see, we have the 6.4 one day ahead and then 6.8. Of course, later we have another 5.9 magnitude. We also show about the, some uh, devastation. And of course, uh, some uh, report we collect from the crowdsourcing. They put picture on the Facebook, so we collect it. And after the verification, we make the map to tell the community official what happened out there. So this is our job. And this is some report because people trapped in mountainous area because it was during a weekend, people go to site, have some uh, activity in the mountain area. So I think I almost come to the final stage of my slide. This is, I think, uh, a kind of the model. I think most of you know the D 
I K W, right? This is the model how we use the information and the knowledge from the data information knowledge to bring wisdom. But for disaster risk reduction, I think we need action. Now we I introduced a lot of scientific tools, but we never, never, ever to forget one thing. We always can see the limit of science and technology. No perfect model, no perfect science. So in coming year, in, 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 in last coming year in Taiwan, we introduced monitoring system. We combine a lot of monitoring system, try to know what happened outside, but limited sensor, limited capacity. So a very important thing, how our information can give decision maker, even general public to have in-time decision to take action. So it's from the science and technology is data and the information, then we can make into knowledge and wisdom most important thing about action. So this is my office pattern. We increase a lot of different discipline of science and technology. And uh, we welcome public private partnership, but I think innovation is very important. So I think lovely, I see the, the, the papel also emphasize innovation during your presentation. And I think I will come to be my last, yeah. This is the last one. For a science and technology, I, I, I emphasize again, need innovation and creativity. So if we do some investment for the transformation so we can deliver understandable knowledge, it's very important thing. It's about tailor-made information intelligence I emphasized in previous slide. Then we need a good person, good at interpretation, increase the risk understanding to change people's mindset. We call it the Current phase is about behavioral management. Even we disseminate a lot of information to the general public, but how they respond to our information intelligence. So we need a kind of behavioral management. So when they see our or receive our information, they will act conservatively, not very like, ignore, ignore our information. But when disaster plus pandemic, I think it's a very complicated question. Because for a disaster manager, we might just focus on problem, maybe like one month is the kind of longest time. But for this time for COVID-19, it takes three years. So very different way to control the crisis. Even myself, I'm learning about how to manage the crisis from the a public uh, health sector, because this time they suffer very long period of time. The situation is so dynamic. So it deserves we to understand what we can work together if in the future other compound disaster, not just disaster, but other impact. Another thing is since people understand the way we increase their perception, when something happens, they can take action. So there's a lot of stakeholder. There's some very important idea with communication, no matter to the general public to the decision maker, even to the NGO. We should try to good good risk communication so we can use some vehicles to take our idea to work with them. The second one is kind of the ER culture. How we can bring the culture, not just for the the, the uh, kids in the school understand the ER, how about that. In Taiwan, I realized one thing, since everyone finished their, grade, uh, their senior high school course, they never received any update about disaster risk reduction until they have kids. Their kids bring something new back home. That might be something that my teacher told us that you should follow. Then they realize some of that concept is out of date. So how to improve kind of the ER culture. Another very important is the life cycle. It's kind of never ending process. Every new disaster will learn something new, and we need to, a lot of uh, 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 young generation. I, right now, I have the sense of the uh, danger. Why is it danger? Because I'm going to retire my position in 10 years. I hope in Taiwan or around the world, I can find some young generation can work together. Before I retire from my position, I can share my knowledge experience with young generation. So they don't have to start from the ground zero. My experience, I start from ground zero, nothing about disaster risk management. But right now, we, I try to understand what happened during my career. 
and what is good, what is wrong. So I hope in the future we can work with the Austin University to work something together on disaster risk management. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. We got time for question for maybe two very quick questions. If there are any comments, Maria. Thank you very much. A uh, very interesting talk, a very refreshing approach that integrates uh, science and technology into government decision making. Um, I'm a computer scientist in AI. I'd be very interested um, to find out whether these models and this data that you're open sourcing are available to people scientists outside Taiwan uh, and whether you work with people outside Taiwan. Yes, I think some of the data we can work with the expert outside Taiwan. But one point I want to mention, though we think AI should be potential for the disaster risk reduction, but most the good big data or AI uh, experts, they're all working for the kind of the financial sector or medical sector because it makes more profit. For disaster risk management, sorry, we cannot make profit, but we save life and save our planet. So welcome, you can contact me later. If you want to have some interest, we can talk later about some collaboration. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. And it's really interesting hearing about your approach and your career. What for you do you think is the biggest challenge in engaging with the public and trying to um, influence them to undertake preparedness actions? That's a very challenging process because uh, you must win their confidence in you first. So I said, we spent a couple of years to build our credit. Sometimes we admit we made mistakes, but most important thing, we must provide quality and constant data information to the general public. So this is why, you see, I use the four step, I often use four step to create information dissemination we try to face the general public directly. Of course, if we don't do kind of interaction with general public, nothing changed about my office, but we want to impress the general public because that's its kind of services. That's, that's the way we can improve our quality. That's the way we can prove our office is so unique. So once one point to with, with the general public is to win the trust. Another one to build kind of uniqueness in Taiwan about our office contribution because uh, in Taiwan it's also very competitive. Whenever I offer to deliver one product, some agency will follow. I think it's the good. We initiate the idea to do something good because they have more budget. So we must find something new, can do something better for our society. So it's very good and active uh, uh, process. But to work with the general public, another approach I mentioned, we work with a lot of NGOs because NGO had more networking with the general public. So for example, for indigenous tribe, we work with several uh, uh, NGOs so they can help us to extend our networking. So this is why I emphasize, uh, for the pillar to support disaster reduction, we need three pillars. First, government, of course. Second thing is research community. Another one is from NGO. For the research community and NGO, there are two can keep a lot of memories and momentum in our society to push agenda award forward because government sometimes, because election might change. But for the research community NGO, they are long lasting organization compared to government. Sorry, I should not say that because government leader always change. Even in my career, I already witnessed uh, maybe 10 premier already because every couple of years because election, boom. But, <laughs> but NCDR is still there. So this is why my office is welcome as uh, uh, EOC now because we are constant role. And a very important thing, we never make any news announcement unless we receive the authority because NCPI should be a good staff, new staff. Though we know a lot of secret, but unless we receive authority, we will not talk to the press or general public directly. So this is our strategy. Thank you. Okay, then while we're looking at the time, can we please thank uh, Dr. Lee again for a very, very interesting <laughs> uh, 
have launched now. Uh, 